so I'm literally trying to sort my bag and restack my property, which is in essence my home and a car. When I had a car, I didn't have to worry about carrying my shit. I could keep my things in my car for traveling for my business, traveling for my authorship, traveling for the things I do in my ministry. And openly, the reality of America is there's always some shitbag playing a game with me. A girl drove past me on a bicycle earlier today before I took my nap behind a building. But isn't it interesting that four of my bags were once three. Now I can tell you that, and you can do the math of what that means, that when I was asleep, someone decided to restructure my organization. But here's what else they did. They've been cutting my bungee cords so that they don't fit correctly into the hook of the ends of the bungee itself. They've been interfering with every piece of, of item I've purchased, and they're stealing my beverage packets. I lost two, I lost, let's see, I lost about 18 beverage packets overnight. Why does that happen to a homeless man? What is it about a homeless person that makes people who are indigent or people who are with wealth think they have the right to steal from me? But here's what happened to me this evening. I'm working through sorting my package and sorting my things and looking for something. And a white Catholic boy comes up and starts to play with me of, here, can I give you my leftover pizza man? Do you understand the level of rudeness of that? I am literally placing myself out of the way as much as possible on a clean cement area so I can sort my things and not pick up a lot of mites and other bugs and things and there's a white boy wanting to consume my time. So I take the time to speak with him. I give him a bit of a reading. I validate some of the things about him that he doesn't think I should know. I try to encourage him to see that it's not me, that it's God who knows him. And at the same time, he's going to play with me. I basically tell him thank you but no to the food offering. I explain what is encouraged by my ministry, which is always cash or gift cards. And openly, he continued to stay and listen to me. So you're going to presume, and as anyone of my age demographic would, that he's open to the information, he's open to the consultation, he's open to the prophetic word of Christ, or whatever he believes in. And since he's Catholic, they tend to believe in Christ, or Mother Mary, or something like that. I encouraged him to read the Beatitudes again, which I think is Matthew chapter 5, but don't quote me on that. I'm not one of those Bible bangers in that way. But what I can say to you today is that when I'm actually thinking loud and I'm talking loud, I'm talking about the experience, I want you to understand what he had the opportunity to do. He had the opportunity to consume my time about a half an hour or more, talking with me, listening with me, sharing with me about his alleged desires to be an early childhood educator because he went on some mission trip and was inspired to help kids. Some of it's believable, some of it's plausible, but that boy being a football boy was short and wanting to be an early child educator said a lot of things to me. I encouraged him to think a little bit bigger in terms of the finances that it would bring to him and how he could do that at any time in his life after he had a little bit more career. I also encouraged him to think about how it's going to be interesting for him to provide for himself a new car and a wife eventually, as most men, particularly Catholics, do. But towards the end of that conversation, he probably forgot something, but I gifted him a faith bop to encourage him to see if he had any little juju from God. After a few minutes of his own concentration, the fob started to move. Now whether the fob started to move because the Lord allowed him access to my angels to make it move to excite him and enthrall him with the force like you see in Star Wars or the good versus evil like you have in Harry Potter, or whether it was really him, he'll figure out over time. So here's a kid who conserved a good 40 to, if I'm really honest, 50 minutes, maybe even an hour of my time, but let's say 30 to 40 minutes just to be safe on the safe side of reasonableness. He received a gift from me, and he drove away in a motherfucking $60,000 Audi. And I'm still homeless. 